Hello and welcome to yet another video review on our YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, now it's a good time. Just hit the button subscribe. And today we are going to talk about a um, very affordable thermal imaging scope made by Pulsar. It's called the Quantum Light XQ30V. This series of uh, thermal imaging scopes was introduced in 2017, in January, they were first shown at SHOT Show in Las Vegas. And as you probably know, Pulsar is one of the most, how to say, fast growing companies in this market. Um, they are the forerunners of the um, digital night optics and thermal optics. They also have a, at this moment, I would say, most probably the widest range of different thermal products on the market and they're growing really with an extreme speed. The reason behind it is that they're really really innovative and their, their products are probably they offer the best quality for the most affordable price. So as you probably know the Quantum series was introduced many years ago and in, in its lifespan, uh, it went through many different modifications and versions. Uh, so this Quantum Light is probably the last iteration of the Quantum series. Uh, the most notable change is that the price went down considerably. This uh, XQ30V model has a 30mm lens inside with 1.6 aperture and it costs around 1500 euros, a little bit more, 1600 which is almost unimaginable for the thermal imaging scope with similar specification only two years ago or maybe three years ago uh, you need to pay more than 3000 euros so this was a substantial price drop and it's really hard to believe that now let's say for roughly 1500 euros you can get such a remarkably well made and with exceptional image quality such a thermal imaging scope. There are two models in this series they are basically the same it's impossible to see outside which one is which the only thing where you can see is here XQ30V on the label otherwise they are completely the same and they are also completely uh, identical to the previous quantum scopes the main difference is that from now on the lens, even though it's bigger, it's hidden behind this mechanism for uh, protecting it. This is the same like it was on XQ19 from the previous uh, quantum thermal imaging scopes. Uh, the 38 model and the 50 had a different uh, objective cover. So there is not basically much new what you can see on the outside uh, the controls for the manual stay the same this rotating button which is probably the nicest thing you can find on any thermal vision uh, thermal imaging scope because it's so easy to control all the menus with the uh, rotating and then pushing it in for a click uh, the video out and the external power in uh, connectors are on the same place and the, the the whole body is made out of uh, reinforced, reinforced plastic. It's uh, reinforced with, um, with um, a fiberglass. Uh, fiberglass is inside, so it's, it can withstand quite some torture. We have experience from the older quantum models, which are now already five, six years old, and they really handle all the abuse and um, what happens with them with time they handle well uh, there are not many uh, broke down issues or anything else so these are really high quality devices uh, they're very light this is around 400 grams not much more 350 and these devices are splash proof that means uh, even if there is raining if you take a little bit of care uh, it, it will be all okay uh, of course this doesn't mean that you can uh, just throw it into the water they are not waterproof as such they are only splash proof the rating is uh, IPX4 
for this housing. Uh, they offer three years of warranty and they also provide service after those three years. So you're covered in any case. Um, the sensor inside is the same like it was in the previous quantum devices. It's uh, 384 by 288 pixels. The pixel size is 17 microns and the re refresh rate is 50 hertz. So even if you look at this specs, it's hard to believe the price point. Um, <clears throat> it also works from minus 25 to plus 50 without a problem. We even tried the old quantum models in, in a refrigerator and they really work. It's no problem for the low temperature. Uh, the startup time is uh, five seconds. So it's a little bit longer than it was on previous quantums. And the power source is the same four AA batteries which go into this tray. You also get a separate tray in the box. Uh, or you can use the DNV, um, the NV uh, power bank, which goes inside here, or an external, external uh, batteries, which are also provided by Pulsar. So you have at least four to five different sources of energy. Uh, and I also have to say that this device uh, uses considerably less energy than previous quantums did. So in this regard, it's a really, really a nice step forward. If I go to optical properties, well, they are nothing short of amazing and stellar if we consider the price point. So you get a, in this device, a 30 millimeter lens with an aperture of f1.6. Uh, this gives you at the lowest magnification because this has a standard magnification of 2.5, then you can digitally um, raise it all the way to, to 10, so 2.5, uh, 5 and 10, so three different settings of magnification. And at the lowest magnification, it gives you almost 22 meters of field of view on 100 meters. And this is something remarkable. This is really, really a lot. Uh, so for scanning of the surroundings of the landscape, it's, it's ex extraordinarily good for, for such purpose. Um, the range of detection is around 900 meters. That means for a 1.7 meter high man, uh, human, it's more than enough for, let's say on 500 meters, you can easily see everything what's alive and which is warm. So even let's say on small, like fox or, uh, or a hare or something like that, you can see it on 500 meters. Then on let's say 200 meters, you can easily see all the details. And this is remarkable because in the last two years, a lot of different devices under 1000 euro price tag hit the market in the thermal segment. But most of them were, I would say, had a really limited use in, let's say for hunting outdoors because their range of detection was 200 meters, 150 meters, something like that. But this one, this is uh, quite a serious piece of kit. So I would say a deer you can see, a red deer, a big red deer you can see on one kilometer without a problem. And this is more than any normal hunter would ever need. I would say the magnification 2.5 and 5 are really easy to use from when handheld. Uh, on 10, I would say it's better to use the, the tripod. You can see here, you can connect the tripod to the device, then you have a really steady image. The diopter setting inside uh, goes from plus five to minus five, so it's no problem to use it either with your glasses or with naked eye. And you, on this diopter, you set the sharpness of the display on the image and then here you set the sharpness of the target. So you focus it here, then you set the correct diopter setting and you have a clear and crisp image. Uh, the sensor, well not the sensor, the display is uh, 640 to 480 so it's really easy to see all the details. Uh, the device inside also has the um, seven different color palettes uh, so it's well, I would say almost too much to to for a normal user. You we mostly use uh, hot red, but you can choose any other, from rainbow to to any other to any other setting. 
the operation itself is really easy. You push the button, wait for five seconds, and then the device is turned on. You have uh, three other buttons for the calibration settings, uh, for the magnification settings outside, and then normally you have a rotating button to entering the menu. A short press gives you a simple basic menu which gives three settings, uh, the brightness, contrast and stadiometric uh, rangefinder. That means that if you know the size of an animal which you are observing, you can just put the um, two lines inside uh, at, the, at the ground and at the top of the animal, then you know approximately how far it is. I'm not a big fan of this rangefinder. I don't believe it's really of much use, but this device also features it. Um, <clears throat> in the menu, what is also important is that you choose the mode, how this device works. That means if you are basically this mode that gives you from forest use to to use in the um, urban environment there where there are many buildings, and then you also have the identification mode. This at the end all goes down to where are you located when you're using it. Uh, a word or two about connectivity. Uh, since this device is light, uh, that means that the price is really affordable. It means it has no Wi-Fi connectivity like all new Pulsars. So no connectivity with their great app um, StreamVision. Uh, so it still works normally if you want to take pictures or photos by this uh, video out output, but you need to buy their recorder, which is an external unit and connect it to your device so that you can take the video. Um, I would say that in today's time this is quite a handicap, but on the other hand, the price of this product is really, really affordable. So I can understand. So if I make a short wrap up and a short summary, I would say it's a without a doubt best optical performance in the segment of thermal imaging scopes under 2000 euros. Maybe even we can maybe set the bar even higher. It's just exceptional, exceptionally well how you see it. Then I will also say it's really well made and tested. This housing has been in different iterations of quantum scopes with us for a long time and it really works. It's durable. It's well made, all the buttons work. Um, now we see devices which are already, already five, six years in use and they work without a problem. So the quality is here. The ergonomics is also nice, especially if you're a right-hander. And I really almost adore this rotating button for the menu because on all other devices from Pulsar, new devices like Helions or other competitive devices always have a problem with ease of use of the menus, not with this one. I think this was the best choice that engineers could do that they chose this rotating button with clicking function. It's really the easiest way to operate the menus and the device. Mm. I would also say that um, Like with all quantums, the prices on the second-hand market will stay high, which is also a nice bonus if you're considering buying it. Um, as you can see, in the box you get also a really nice pouch, which is very soft and can protect the device against any bumps. You get the batteries, one set of batteries, um, a small string to attach to the device, a video out cable, a manual and a warranty card inside with three years warranty period and the manual is really made well. You can see in English, in French, in, in German, Spanish, Italian and Russian. You get two different holders for the battery, so quite a good setup. What I think could have been done better, where at this price point it's hard to say any negative comment about this device because it so affordable. But I would say um, the turn on time should be a little bit uh, faster, so five seconds is quite a lot. Um, there is no external indicator if the device is on or, or not. Well, I apologize, it is here. Um, I would say that 
the Wi-Fi connectivity would be nice. Um, longer time between different calibrations. You can set either manual, either automatic or semi-automatic calibration modes. But if you set it to automatic, which is the preferred choice, you will see that the time between one calibration and another it's quite short. I don't know, I don't, I'm not an expert how this is programmed and why is this necessary, but it would be nicer if, if the calibration time would be a little bit, uh, well, the time between two different calibrations would be a little bit shorter. I also think that they, they produced two different devices, uh, the 23 millimeter lens device, uh, you can see it here, Light XQ uh, 23V and Light XQ 30V. These devices are really, really similar. One offers a little bit more wider field of view, the smaller one, and a shorter range of detection, 800 meters instead of 900. And the uh, XQ30 offers a little bit narrower field of view, which is still a lot, 22 meters at 100 meters, and a longer range of detection. I would say that there is no real need for two devices which are so similar. So apart from that, I would say this is almost um, must-have kit, piece of kit, because for 1,500 euros it is, well, above all expectations. It, the Optically, it's so good. Thank you for watching. If you have any additional questions, please send, an, send us an email, uh, visit our webpage and use comments on this YouTube video.